So this is a movie directed by uh, Aaron Zorkin, uh, also written by Aaron Zorkin, a uh, famous writer. Uh, has written a lot of classic material. Um, this is his second feature film. Um, this one after Molly's Game uh, with Jessica Chastain, uh, Idris Elba. Uh, a film I, I enjoyed. Um, I thought that uh, the film had a little bit, a little bit too much narration. I thought. Yeah, that was that was a very um, but, entertaining movie, but it was also made sense considering that's uh, Sorkin's first time out as a director. Yeah, you know, first time out as a director. I'm um, still still very enjoyable movie. Um, I, I didn't I, I didn't hate that narration as sometimes as I do. Uh, like something like uh, what was that movie with Tom Holland, The Devil All the oh, Time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 not like that. Like it, it, I don't think it's as bad narration as something like that. Um, <laughs> I thought it's actually added to the film of Molly's Game. But here um, he's telling the story of the Chicago Seven. Um, sometimes also called the Chicago Eight because of the uh, with the addition of Bobby Seal. Um, who was originally part of the trial, but uh, later um, was separated. His case was separated from everyone else's. Um, in this one, Bobby Seale is played by Yahya Abdul Mateen II, who, goddamn, that brother is working. I mean, yeah. he is. I mean, he is in everything. Um, <laughs> Black man, you know, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, um, you know. First, he, he was on The Get Down, which is like a hugely popular Netflix show. He was in Black Mirror. Um, he was supposed to be, um, uh, well, he is. He was, he was in Candyman that was supposed to be released this year, but got mm. delayed till next year, October. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, he's just constantly working all the he's time, gonna, doing a bunch of stuff. He's going to be in the next I, Matrix, too. Yep, going to be in the next Matrix, yeah. Um, I think, he's, is he supposed to be playing Morpheus, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Is he? I thought I thought I read somebody supposed to be playing Morpheus. I don't know. I just Why? maybe I'm just a, I don't know. I, he black, <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne black. He he was like I don't know. Maybe I'm just assuming. I don't he, know. No. Yeah, no. Besides, we all know that that Morpheus is being played by Samuel Jackson in the Matrix Four. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that Stop. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so um, and he's also going to be in the new Mad Max mm-hmm. movie too, the prequel too. Mm. Just gonna, oh, yeah. yeah, so I mean, I mean, he's got a great agent. Um, he, yeah. he's, ste- he's steady working, man. I mean, he's great. Um, you also have uh, Eddie Redmayne, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, Jeremy Strong, Mark Rylance, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, um, and it's telling the story uh, about the seven people, um, about the riots that happened um, in 1968 during the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and these, you know, real life figures that a lot of these people are playing, um, and they were on trial for inciting violence. Uh, Eddie Redmayne, Alex Sharp, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, Jeremy Strong, uh, John Carroll Lynch, um, who you who might have seen like American Horror Story, um, you know, various seasons of that show, um, and Mark Rylance is their lawyer that's defending them uh, against the um, Justice Department. Uh, which is uh, the lawyer prosecuting the case is Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, and you see early on um, that it's basically just kind of, uh, a lot of it is, uh, it's a hat job, you know. Um, a lot of it is really the Justice Department really pushing this case so they can make a statement. Um, and the person who uh, they first talked to is the Attorney General. Actually, it's a character from The Boys, uh, Dr. Vogelbaum. Mm. Um, hmm who's in this um who's actually a character from the boys and um you know they said like okay well you know just go levitt's asking so okay like well we really don't really see anything here to really go forward all that much so what do you really want to do it's like okay well you're gonna make the case you're gonna get the indictment and you're gonna make the case you know what i mean no matter what and you're gonna get a conviction no matter what you know and basically just pushing this forward um because at the time um because they were there to protest the vietnam war uh, i think this was like in the very early days of the nixon administration and he was Mm -hmm. like very he was very uh anti like hippie anti uh young people movement and he wanted to he wanted Uh, to make a statement by convicting these guys yeah, you know, make a statement. Um, Nixon, yeah, uh, you know, very anti, you know, everything, you know, like like Nick said, uh, you know, anti, you know, hippie, anti, you know, the whole left movement, um, anti black guy, uh, anti, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, just just basically, you know, everything anti that was not basically white. I mean, basically, there you go. Um, so and not didn't fall in line with what he thought. 
Um, so they're, they're pushing this case forward. Um, and you kind of see like how much of it is, you know, you know, kind of a lot of it is miscarriages of justice of them using the justice system to basically try to crush these guys, which kind of really brings you on their side. Um, especially, um, you know, especially a movie about riots and, you know, protesters versus police, obviously, you know, something that's very relevant going on today. Um, as you see with, you know, riots going on, police, um, tons of footage, um, you know, you see online of protesters clashing with police. Um, you, you know, see photos of people being hit with rubber bullets, you know, you, you know, eyes exploded, huge, you know, welts on their heads, um, you know, being beaten with batons. Um, so it's something that very, very much contrasts, you know, what's going on right now um, in, in society. Um, and uh, to see it kind of, you know, kind of like it, it, history almost repeating itself, I think also adds a more con personal connection to the story as well. Um, and to see, you know, a lot of these characters, you know, in trial, um, trying to, you know, best in Mark Rylance trying to best defend these people um, is also very interesting. Um, and Mark Rylance, um, I would say, is one of the big standouts mm. for me in the film. <clears throat> Um, I thought he was very, very good. Um, a lot of his kind of thing of being the lawyer is a little bit of kind of like, well, I'm just the simple lawyer who, you know, is trying to do the good thing and trying to do the right thing. And, you know, I'm trying to do his best for these defendants. You know what I mean? Uh, even though I may not agree with uh, maybe one or two of them, I'm trying to do his best to, to actually carry out justice. And, and that's what, you know, that's kind of like kind of the, the, the defendant lawyer kind of shtick sometimes that happens in a lot of these kind of, uh, you know, law things that you see when it's based on the criminal justice system, movies or TV shows, uh, what have you. Um, and you kind of have just going left the opposite of that. who's kind of the young, aggressive prosecutor who, who wants to get this case done, who, you know, his career is rising and, you know, he's he's an upstart. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss it to you a little bit, Nick. Uh, what did you think about the performances throughout the film from this ensemble cast of, of really good talent? Well, um, first of all, you mentioned uh, Aaron. This is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, and Sorkin is one of, in my opinion, the greatest screenwriters in Hollywood. He he uh, wrote the script for The Social Network, which is my favorite movie of the last decade. So I'll just say that right now. And he is an ear for dialogue and everybody in this movie shines. And uh, especially like you mentioned, Mark Rylance, but I also thought the standout was uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, who's doing an American accent, which was a little mm -hmm. janky uh, at first from uh, him and Eddie Redmayne doing American accents. But uh, I eventually got used to it because God damn, they're just so good in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they are very good in this. Um, another standout for me was Jeremy Strong, um, who talks like a Muppet. Um, he kind of talks like uh, a Janice from uh, uh, the Muppets. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You know for sure, man. You know, yeah, very, he, you know, very that kind. He, he, he is that he's that stoner he's hippie. He's that stereotype stoner hippie. And you get the sense he was high during the entire trial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah, I mean, like him and uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, just, you know, because they're the kind of the hippies of the movement. And you see um, uh, what I like what they do also with the film is it doesn't uh, like story wise doesn't like just have them lead up to the riot then they do mm. the trial and then you just see the yeah, trial the structure the structure it's of this uh managed to keep it entertaining because with a lot of courtroom dramas they that's a structure that can get very repetitive you like show the crime committed you show the build up to the trial and then the actual trial and here they really uh jump back and forth and they keep the they keep a uh, the narrative uh, interesting because uh, we don't really flash back to the actual uh, uh, riots until like towards the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Towards the end, you see um, you know more of exactly what happened. 
but leading up to the film the beginning of it you see them you know organized and it's like okay you see all the main characters say like hey okay we're gonna do this protest in chicago i'm traveling here this is what we're gonna do this is the plan then it cuts to the trial then it and then during the trial the witnesses are given testimony and you see then it cuts back to the protest and what leads up to the more what leads up to the riot so i, I kind of very much liked that story element that structure um because like nick said it's with courtroom drama is very much of like okay here's the crime they were going to lead to the trial and then it's going to be the, the second half of the movie is going to be all the trial um what I like is they kind of intercut between the two of telling the story, you know, of what's going on in the trial and then what's going on, like what actually happened, you know, during the protest. And when you, you know, look up the, the real story of, you know, what happened during the trial and the protest and everything, um, you, you know, you know, there was tons of contempt of courts, you know, tons of fighting with the judges, um, tons of, you know, clashing with the police and them, you know, there. Uh, for the purpose of wanting to, you know, do the right thing and to end the war in Vietnam, they were big, big opposers to that. Um, and and you see them and how much they were kind of fighting for that change. Um, and throughout the movie, um, what I liked is when they did show kind of, you know, uh, like the stuff with the police. They did a good job of like intercutting this footage of like that looked like footage from the 60s, like this, you know, kind of grainy type footage, which I thought was also a really nice touch. Mm. So it's, it's a lot of good, you know, kind of techniques that Sorkin uses here, um, especially for a guy that I mean, this is his second feature film. Um, it, it works very, very well. Um, and throughout uh, the best stuff is, you know, the stuff in the trial, in the courtroom scenes, which I think are very good, even if they can't come off, I think is a little hokey. Um, I don't know how you felt about that, Nick. I thought some of it was a little, a, a little kind of, you know, a little kind of, kind of, kind of that, that Hollywood fantasy stuff. Yes, I don't know how yes. You uh, this is very much a Hollywood uh, fantasy version of what uh, what a trial would look like. But that's common with most uh, Aaron Sorkin's things. I think his biggest uh, feature claim to fame, the biggest example of that would be A Few Good Men, another Aaron Sorkin script. But uh, but the dialogue and performances in this is is so, so good that it didn't really bother me so much. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was going to be, I was going to be, uh, it's like, to be fair, if it wasn't Hollywood eyes, Nice. It, it would be kind of boring mm. to just watch a regular trial. <laughs> yes, because because yeah. trials are boring as yeah, hell. If you ever watch C <laughs> yeah. span or watch any like courtroom uh, coverage, you know mm. trials are like fucking boring. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it could be kind of juicy, especially when it's a motherfucker you hate. You know what I mean? That, that, that that's that's on trial. I don't know. Sometimes it could be kind of juicy. I don't know. Would you yeah. watch? Would you watch two hours of it or six months of footage from it, based on how long this trial yeah. went? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because yeah, they say this trial went on for six months. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, at some point, I'd probably lose interest. And be like, yeah, you know what? And yeah, you're right. I'd probably lose interest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so they have a a lot of material. You know, they have to really cut down, condense the two mm -hmm. hours. A lot of you know, six months worth of stuff. You know what I mean? Of <clears throat> these people, you know, in this courtroom. You know, cutting it down to two hours. So I, I get that. Um, just in the sense that when I say kind of Hollywood fantasy, kind of hokey in a lot of sense, it's just the way that sometimes they present it in the way the things happen in the courtroom and things like mm. that. But like I said, there were a lot of contempt of courts. Um, there were a lot of, you know, battles with judge, the judge. And the judge in this is played by Frank Langella, um, who's like a, like, two scenes away from just turning into a f full fledged dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, there's. There's, there's tons of scenes where, you know, like, you know, they're, they're trying to talk and he's like, order, order in the court, order in the court. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's basically what the majority of what he kind of does in this movie is just mm. scold people and just say, sit down, sit, sit, sit down. You know, that's kind of majority of what he does. Um, and Frank Langella is, is a very talented actor, legendary actor. Um, you know, I, you know, very amazing, uh, you know, veteran actor. So, I mean, he handles the, uh, you know, the material very well. Uh, but I think a lot of his stuff was, you know, kind of, you know, it was, it was, a, he played a good villain. He played somebody you really, you know, really want, wanted to hate and wanted to go up against and wanted them to beat because he just represents that system. Yeah, he, he, you know he represents I mean? that, that very, that very, uh, corrupt justice system. 
yeah, you know what I mean, he's just the face of that, you see him constantly, you know, fucking over these guys, you know what I mean, um, there's a scene where, um, he recognizes there's jurors that sympathize, you know, with the defendants, and he purposely tries to get them off the mm-hmm. case, um, you know, I mean, things like that, so it, it, it really, really just makes you kind of, you know, hate the guy, and, you know, I think he just represents that face of that, of that system, that, that corrupt system that, that we have in the criminal justice um, um, in, in America, um, and, you know, the, the ending, I thought the ending was also, like, kind of that peak, I don't know if, the, now, I don't know if the ending really happened, if people really did that, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, with uh, any, with any movie based on, that says, uh, based or inspired by a true story, assume 90% of it is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's basically what you have to assume. Um, and with a lot of these kind of based on true story movies, but so I don't know if that really happened towards the end of it. Um, uh, but I, you know, I, I, I understood it, you know, it, it kind of was a good closure to things, even if it, I did find it, you know, very kind of hokey in, in its way of the way they did it. Well, well I, um, I agree with you. It felt a little hokey, but at the same time, it is also going back to the very reason that they, that they went to Chicago to protest. It was to protest the war yeah. and the trial had like kind of escalated and become a circus and they wanted to take that statement and say all right this is why we're here mm. yeah mm. Very, very much that's that's a very good point and and very good uh, very good point there um yeah because uh, it, it it goes back to you know what they're fighting for and that's for the people that are being sent over there to fight in Vietnam, which they see as a useless, pointless war. Um, and so, um, I think I, I really enjoyed this a lot. Um, it was, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it's on Netflix. You can see it. Um, I thought it for being a, a movie that's two hours and 10 minutes, I thought it wasn't really that a slog to get through. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, didn't feel all that long. I, I was very much interested in it all the way through. Um, and I, I would say it's a, maybe I'd say seven and a half Mm. out of 10, 7.5. I'm going to do a Sebastian 7.5 out of 10. I'm going to use them decimals. Um, (laughs) there, uh, great performances, great direction, uh, really solid writing. Um, even it can be cheesy at some parts. Um, I still think it still pulled off things very, very well and the execution of it very, very well. Nick? Well, I've already mentioned that I, I'm a huge Aaron Sorkin fan. Social Network was my favorite movie of the 2010s, and in his second uh, directorial outing, he makes uh, one of my, well, well least uh, like dramas in a courtroom drama, and he managed to make it interesting. And this is a subject that is still relevant to this day with history repeating it with uh um uh issues of uh, uh rioting or uh, peaceful protesting and clashing with police uh, especially today that's this movie has never been more relevant and the message of this is is like really uh, uh really affecting and along with that this script is it sings and the performances from everybody in this cast everyone is bringing their a game and they are knocking it out of the park especially uh mark rylance and i'm uh and there is an appearance by uh michael keaton and i never knew i needed to see michael keaton worth an aaron sorkin script because he is only in this for a very brief amount of time but that was my favorite part of the whole movie and and I can already tell you, this is probably going to end up on my top five uh, for this year. Really? Yes, I I, I absolutely it... love this movie. I give this uh, definitely nine and a half out of ten. Um, a couple criticisms I have with the American accents from uh, Sasha Baron Cohen and Eddie Redmayne, they were a little distracting. Um, I wish that uh, we got to spend a little more time with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character as the prosecutor because you, there's, there's hints that he's not on board with uh, this case that they're doing. He even says in the beginning that, yeah, you, yeah, we kind of have jack shit to go off of to get a conviction, but he's, but he's yeah. kind of hamstrung into it by uh, the attorney general at the time. 
And when Michael Keaton uh, showed up in it, I, is his voice just getting gruffer, or I mean, what's going on? His voice like, is, is his like, voice is slowly becoming Batman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you know, he just talks like really deeper like this, you know. He's I'm getting up yeah. preparing for the Flash. I'm with it. <laughs> I, I, I guess so. Like his, it's like his voice is getting even more gravelly than it was. Before. Hey, he's getting older. That tends to happen. But yeah, Michael Keaton, amazing actor, and holy shit, I never knew how much I needed him in an Aaron Sorkin movie. Mm. Nice. I actually have a couple of questions for you guys. Right. Like, is it pretty? Oh, please. Is it, is it a? Is it kind of preachy? Is it that kind of that kind of Hollywood movie? Is it pretty preachy or is it pretty pretty level headed? I, I, I think it can um, definitely be interpreted as preachy. Ho- however, uh, it's it's never... I'm trying to think how to say this. It doesn't go out of its way to be preachy. Okay. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't beat over you know my head it, with the message or anything at all? Uh, I, I mean, did you ever see the movie Just Mercy with Michael B. Jordan? Mm-hmm. Didn't yeah. see it. Just a little bit. Oh, so it's like, yeah. Is that kind of movie? Yeah, okay. it, it like just mercy with Michael B. Jordan, um, which was a movie which was based on a, another situation, is based on a real life a story um, where he was defending people uh, on death row, uh, falsely imprisoned uh, black men on, on death row. It's it's similar to that in in the way that I kind of felt that kind of because it's a, it's a very movie about like it's telling a very important story that you want to hear about people who you know been wrong by the justice system. Um, but it, it does do it in a way that's a little that's a, it can be a little preachy um, and, and a little kind of over like kind of forced a little bit but I still think I mean you know I still think there's a lot of really good performances in here um, and I mean it is an important message um, you know that is very relevant so uh, I mean you kind of take that how you kind of want it and how you kind of can interpret those things but I mean if it's a big issue for you I mean I think you can see the trailer and determine whether that's going to be like a big issue mm. for you but I don't think I don't think it's so so preachy that it completely ruins the movie okay I might check it out after this really yeah yeah it's it's on Netflix you know available um just it just got released uh this Friday uh this Friday oh, okay. um, now so the most important question to a 1960s period piece as the soundtrack <laughs> they don't actually do <laughs> there's not a, uh, there's a not lot a lot of, of uh, uh 60s uh uh, diegetic music or non-diegetic. There's not a lot of uh, focus placed on the soundtrack. That's disappointing. Mm-hmm. Zero out of ten. <laughs> I haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, they don't. I don't. Do they play any '60s song? Uh, I don't think they do. Nothing. No, Jimmy. Nothing comes to mind. Really? No. Not no. even they, Beatles. <laughs> no. They don't it's do. Like, I, dude, uh, this is I the guess Net- they didn't have dude, the money. This is a Netflix movie. You know how expensive those rights are. <laughs> yeah. You got a point there. You spent it all on the cast. Because I know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, probably yeah. spent all on the cast. Because yeah. um, I know what you're talking about. Like, in a 60s movie, you're going to get The Stones, or you're going to get, mm-hmm. Fortunate like, Stone. Credence, uh, CC, CCR, Credence Clearwater Revival. Get some you know? Hendrix. Yeah, because any, any Vietnam movie, I don't know what the fuck is it. Any Vietnam movie, I guess it's a legal contract. You have to play Running Through the Jungle. It's like a yeah. legal fucking contract. You gotta play at least for 10 seconds. I'm surprised that that didn't play at least like during like a montage of the riots and stuff. <laughs> yeah, like Bad Moon Rising. It, like, yeah. So, oh, they, they, no, they don't, they, don't, they don't play any popular songs on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll still check it out because it sounds good. Yeah. And yeah. I saw the trailer. The trailer was good. <laughs> yeah. Can you rate the trailer? Rate the trailer. <laughs> rate the trailer. Uh, for the trailer, I give it a uh, solid. I will watch it out of ten. It did its job. <laughs> so that was a good show discussing the Chicago Seven uh, movie review, Black Pink, uh, Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, Sebastian, thanks for coming on. Oh, thank man. you. Thank you for having um, me. You know, Black Pink. Thanks um, for coming on. Was fun. You know, uh, didn't appreciate your bad opinions about Hill House, uh, but you know, could have said more. Um, still great having you here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, that was definitely a treat to bring in, especially the two Jennies. Um, that was great discussing it. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was a nice discussion. Uh, 
so I, I love that a lot. Um, I have some solar YouTube videos to look up yeah. uh, tonight. That's a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Yeah, doing, doing some research for research purposes. Uh, right. Purely research purposes. <laughs> um, so, uh, to everybody listening to this, hey, uh, Chase, will you let me know people can find you? Uh, you can find me at Mr. Chase Mac at uh, Twitter and Instagram, spelled M R C H A Y S E Mac uh, M A C. I hope I'm not going to regret this. I hope there's not too many K-pop stands coming at us for our opinions. They're going to light you on fire, man. Find me there. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to get you. How about you, Nick? All right. uh, (laughs) Where where, where can the people find you? Okay. uh, You can find... Where can the K-pop stands find you? Okay. First off, uh, fuck K-pop. And uh, y'all can find me (laughs) at Mr. Chase Mac. (laughs) Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm cool with K-pop. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Night and Day Nick. And uh, like and subscribe to this show or you're dead to me. Ooh. Oh, uh, oh, if wow. you're on Apple too, uh, rate this rate this podcast five stars for the homies. Uh, <laughs> share it on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever you wherever you share things. Yeah, wherever you listen to this, mm-hmm. uh, like, subscribe, comment, uh, rate us. Five stars only though. No no fours, no threes, no twos, no ones. Five do it because it's the five. right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian, I know you told people before. Uh, just tell people again. You know, yeah. uh, what are you doing with your show? People, where people can find you on social media, everything like that. Church has been the lookout for the Let the Battle Begin with your host, Josh, right here. We, uh, we did a first episode, very nerdy battle. It was a lot of fun. So keep on the lookout for that. And more content on the sub show. If you like podcasting, you can check out Hablando Shit. There will be subtitles for those who don't speak English, uh, Spanish, sorry, so you're good. And if you want just pure movie talks, you can just check out my film blog at Sebascope Film Reviews. Oh, if you want to just follow me on social media, you can, you can find me on Facebook at Sebastian Sierra or on Instagram at Sebish with four eyes. Nice. Um, all right, so uh, like like people said, hey, um, if you want to check us out, uh, Twitter, Facebook, The Afternoon Tune. Uh, we're also now on where uh, where you mostly listen to podcasts: Spotify, uh, App, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Anchor, uh, YouTube, or just everywhere. Um, invading, invading the internet right now. Just like K-pop, um, K-pop, yeah, K-pop invasion is the Afternoon Tune mm-hmm. invasion uh, right here. <laughs> Um, so, uh, everything, the afternoon tune, uh, if you want to check us out, uh, like Chase and Nick said, you know, uh, you know, rate us five stars, uh, give us that good old constructive criticism if you can. Um, K-pop stands, um, I think we can definitely love K-pop more. I completely agree with you. Um, I am not like Chase and Please Nick. don't cancel us. Uh, Ban K-pop. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely on your side. I am a, I am an ally of the community. Yes, uh, Guilty by association, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so, um, I hope you all check us out, give us good reviews, leave comments, likes, all that good stuff. Subscribe helps us out, helps grow the channel. Uh, let us know what we did wrong, let us know what we did right. Um, so, to all you people out there listening to this, hope you have a great time and don't forget to always stay tuned. Ooh. Ooh.